the Mantis Air Defense System. With its sophisticated sensor technology, the system can even detect incoming artillery shells and destroy them with its guns. The Mantis Air Defense System is a real fire breather. At close range, it can detect and intercept just about anything approaching from the air. The revolver cannon fires 35 millimeter ammunition at a rate of approximately 1,000 rounds per minute. The system was developed especially for the protection of military camps in conflict and war zones, which face the threat of surprise attacks at any time. These include threats from airplanes, but especially from rockets and relatively small artillery shells and mortar shells. The Mantis Air Defense System comprises 35 millimeter rapid fire guns, fire control radars, optical targeting systems, and a laser rangefinder. The rapid fire gun reaches a rate of fire of 1,000 rounds per minute. The maximum engagement range is five kilometers. Each round of ammunition contains hundreds of smaller tungsten projectiles. The German Air Force's Mantis systems are stationed at the Totendorf Barracks on the Baltic coast of Schleswig-Holstein near Plön. They belong to Air Defense Missile Group 61. In 2012, the Bundeswehr ordered two Mantis systems, each with six 35mm caliber rapid fire guns. Total cost? Approximately 136 million euros. This stationary close-range air defense system is one of the most advanced of its type in the world. Each of its guns is loaded with 252 programmable projectiles. They are loaded onto a strip of up to seven rounds, raised up and loaded into the gun. The gun then pulls it into the magazine. And yes, it also counts the rounds independently. So we always know how much ammunition is in the weapon at any given time. This removable container holds the brain of the Mantis unit. The individual guns and reconnaissance systems are connected to the operations and fire control center via fiber optic cables. In theory, the Mantis can engage targets completely autonomously. What you see on top rotating is the Surge radar antenna. That's responsible, so to speak, for all RAM reconnaissance. The RAM one in front is the tracking radar antenna. That emits radar beams to the target so that it can be tracked. Then we have our optronics here on the side. Firstly, there's a TV camera, and next to that, we also have an infrared camera, which we can also use to track the target visually. The Mantis only takes around seven seconds to identify and then engage a target. The so-called combat command personnel are responsible for giving the order to fire. It's the Bravo in the operations and fire control center who decides. Essentially, they are the ones responsible for monitoring the entire air situation. And in principle, they are the only ones who decide whether or not the target can be engaged. In anti-aircraft warfare, two guns always fire at the target simultaneously. This usually involves firing volleys of several dozen so-called airburst projectiles. We have three coils installed here in the front. The first measures the velocity of the projectile as it enters. So, when we fire around, it measures the entry velocity here. The second coil measures the exit velocity between the two coils. And then the third coil programs the projectile. Each individual projectile has a time fuse, which is programmed by the weapon computer as it leaves the barrel. When the projectile reaches the determined trajectory of the airborne target, the ignition charge detonates a few meters from the calculated aiming point. The shell then releases a burst of tungsten projectiles, forming a dispersed cloud of shrapnel. Anything that enters this cloud is pierced by one of the countless shards of tungsten and inevitably crashes.
The Air Force trains on the Mantis system on the firing range at the Bundeswehr barracks in Todendorf. There, the projectile fragments can fall into a safe area of the Baltic Sea. While the weapon is being live fired, the airspace is closed to civilian traffic. In a combat situation, any order to fire will always involve an assessment of the risk, which the combat command officer has to make in a matter of seconds. The system works completely autonomously. It logs the target by itself, it aims at the target. But I can also assign targets myself. That isn't an issue either. Nevertheless, the system is designed to work automatically, while the human sitting in the control and fire control center is still the one who pushes the button and still decides for themselves whether or not it is the right target. As a protective shield for encampments in war zones, automated targeting is essential. It means that particularly small and quick projectiles, such as approaching artillery shells and rockets, can be intercepted accurately.